Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming my July wrap up and July was a pretty okay good reading month. I ended up reading 21 books. I read all the books on my TBR except like one audiobook and then like one book which was kind of annoying but I was behind the whole month in my reading and I was just struggling in general to keep up so I don't really mind not reading that one book. I might get to the Anayas and might not but like it's okay, like, I read all the books I want to read the most. This was kind of like an extra book, so it was fine. And I'm up reading 8,173 pages, and then, as I said, 21 books. And a lot of these books were really, really thick, like, over 500 pages. And just, like, compare, last month I read 24 books. I read three books more than this month, but I only read 6,294 pages. So, like, I read 2,000... Or something pages more but less books just because they were so thick but yay let's get started talking about these books first i will show you my god favorite season books but i will of course not talk about them here i was talking about in my god favorite season wrap up this month in august so you will see that soon in all the books i read for the last three months for that reading challenge so for that i read Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Heilig, The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan, and Killing Commandatore by Haraku Murakami. So as I said, those four books will be my god for season wrap up, and now for the other books I read this month. We first have Sunstone, Wool Yum Tree by Stepan Sejic. This one is the third volume in this comic series, and it basically follows these two girls here. Is it even both of them on the cover? This is only one girl. This is the other girl. And they met online, became best friends, and then decided to become BDSM partners. They both, like, had these, I guess, like, wishes in their sexual lives, but, like, never found anyone proper to, like, do with. And they started to fall in love. And it's their relationship and also other side characters that they know. And it follows, like, their love story and stuff. It's super, super cute. Very dirty. <laughs> <laughs> which is also fun and I'm really really enjoying myself. I will keep picking this up as we go on but the fourth volume was solo for a long time so I don't know when I would get to it but like I will continue it and it's a really cute and nice comic series. I'll talk about the next three just all together because why not? They all belong together so we have Jujutsu Kaisen by Gege Akutami. This is volume three. Oh, they're actually in the wrong order. <laughs> what am I doing? This is volume two, three, and four. And I read all three of them this month, obviously, or else they wouldn't be in this wrap up. And I still have two more volumes, and then they are sold out forever, probably. So I probably will never get to the next ones. I'm joking. Halfway. Sorry, I had to switch up the angle a bit because I don't know what I prefer, but here we are. Yeah, so Itadori finds out that curses are real, etc. And these people that fight curses are Jujutsu sorcerers and they like the spell curses and stuff, which is basically like, I guess I could call them kind of demons, but they're not really demons because they're all curses. And um, like they go to school to fight them and then a lot of other things happens. I don't know why this became so chaotic like suddenly, but here we are. Uh, what is going on? Can these just stand still? Oh my god. Um, but yeah, so I just watched the anime or like now it's like two months ago, but you get the point. And I'm really, really, really enjoying the story. And now I'm just like kind of still in like the area where I watched anime, but like I'm still enjoying it a lot. I love the characters. I really enjoy the world. I love like the general humor because you have so many serious moments and then it gets like really, really funny. I have said it before, but it reminds me like a mix of Bungo Stray Dogs meets Demon Slayer. And it's like the best thing I can describe it as if you're familiar with those two, which is like two of my faves. So this reminds me a lot of those two together. So it's like the best combination you can get. And I'm just really, really enjoying myself. I will continue with the series whenever it's not sold out. Also, here are my two favorite characters. So that is life. <laughs> Yay. Can these like not be annoying to hold? Like they were so, what's it called, smooth. I put opening on my TBR by Brandon Sanderson and I forgot that there was like a, I guess, short story in between like Wars of Radiance and Oofbringer. So I decided to pick up Edge Dancer, which is that sort of story. I wasn't on my TBR, but here we are. And this one just follows Liv, who's a character we see in words. And then of course she's also an Oofbringer. And yeah, she's just one of the other Knights of Radiance, I guess, which is not really a spoiler because it's what the book is about. But yeah, it's set in the same world. I personally didn't enjoy this story that much. I know that 
Brown Thompson wrote it because he doesn't have time to give Liv that much page time in like the big books maybe but I just feel like he didn't really add much to the story the first part of it like it's even in words and like I didn't feel like I cared enough about the character to like care that much for this story so it's like probably my, no one of the least favorite things I've ever read by Sanderson just because it didn't really like feel like a cool awesome short story like, like Emperor Soul I really really love that but this one just gave me nothing like it didn't reveal anything either it was just like a character running around kind of and I was just like oh okay like I didn't hate it but like I didn't love it so, like three out of five stars yeah and then I read a psalm for the wild build by Becky Chambers this one was a e arc that I got from NetGalley I don't know why voice is dying and I have a full review up on my channel so you can check that out basically I followed this monk Dex and they want to be a tea monk which is like they go around and serve tea and then they like kind of I was gonna say they're kind of like a free therapist because people like have problems and stuff and then they give them tea to like sue those problems and there's different tea for different problems kind of because they need to be good at like reading people's emotions but they still feel like that's not enough for them and they decide to go out in the wilderness where no human have been for a really long time and they meet this robot and they form a friendship and it's just super super cute super adorable really 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 like this one so four or five stars and check out my review down below if you want to see my full review for this. I then read Bungo Stray Dogs volume 11 by Kafka Arsagiri and Sango Harukuva. This continues Bungo Stray Dogs. My fave is like a armed detective which they all have abilities. They fight this mafia and then they also like solve different cases and they're just the most amazing people and I love them so much. Like Dasa in here is one of my favorite characters of all time. Can I say that every time I talk about this? Yes. What I kind of, I guess what the negative in this one is that characters that we thought we were kind of done with came back and I feel like that kind of like makes certain events that happened earlier in the manga mean less and that annoys me but I hope that like do a Bungo Stray Dogs as I will call it and just like get rid of those problems like like this and you don't expect it but like I hope so because I just like I don't bother having the same storyline again that's unnecessary so yeah that's it maybe they have to work together but we will see I then read City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare this one I read for my reread of like all of the books with my friends I don't think anyone has actually finished this except me we are taking a little break it's just a bit funny I just decided to finish it because like we were in the middle of it oh here's my bookmark apparently and I was just like I'm not gonna like just stop in the middle so yeah but it's fine we are just chilling uh this will be and forever will be i think my least favorite of all the books in the shadow hunter chronicles it still stands true to this day i reread it and i was like now i remember why i didn't like it literally nothing happens but yeah i don't even bother any of the plot to you but this is my least favorite in the series and it still is and i gave it two out of five stars so yeah nothing happens okay and it's annoying. So there we had that. And then also read a book I didn't like that much, which is Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. I think I put this on my TBR in like April. I think it's April or March. I can't remember which month. And basically I ordered it and it never showed up. And then I didn't bother ordering it again, but then I finally did. And now I actually read it because I was like, meh. So the reason I'm reading it is because, well, I can't leave my series unfinished. And also like, I just want to finish this as I started, as I said, but like, I want to watch a TV show, but I'm that kind of person who really, really enjoys reading the book before watching whatever I'm gonna watch. That was a really loud email. <laughs> so like, here we are, I'm gonna continue. So in this one, I can't really talk about the plot, I guess. It follows Diana who opens this going more, I was gonna say like this manuscript because she's a scholar. And then like, it starts like all these events because everyone is hunting this manuscript. And then she meets this vampire called Matthew. She's a witch, they get a thing, it's illegal yay it's like sophisticated twilight with a bit sprinkle of like trying to be outlander in it <laughs> i don't even know this book was almost worse than the first one and i don't understand what had happened like i feel like it could have been so interesting because there's so many things going on there's like a solid world and there's solid writing kind of but how do you manage to write this and then nothing happens they're like there's literally one plot point this whole book that is important I don't want to say it because it's a spoiler and it annoyed me like I was just sitting there like being this this is why we are here not the biggest fan of this but I will keep reading them apparently and buy them in hardcover so why do I exist I do not know but I gave it two out of five stars so there we are with that I then reread 
A Game of Thrones by Jordan Martin. As I said, there's just few thick ones in here. I reread this because I do, for some reason, want to rewatch the TV show, but I also want to finish the series because I haven't actually read the fifth book. I say finished. It's not like the series itself is finished. But yeah, I have a good time. So yeah, but I want to reread them uh, all in English and stuff. And yeah, I was gonna do that in 2019. I reread this and then I didn't continue. So I reread this again. And I don't know why. Like, I'm, I'm fully aware that Game of Thrones has a lot of issues. I don't know, like so many, but I also love the story. I love how we just follow a billion point of views. I love how no one is safe. You can kill anyone at any moment. I love the world, even though like, you know, it's very westernized, I would say. And I just love the different characters. I just don't like that the characters are supposed to be like 13 and 14 and then do all like this really, yeah. But I guess it was like this in these days, which is a bad excuse. But still, I just age them up in my mind, just like the David in the TV show. But like, I just love the world he created and the different characters and how they all interact and how all this plotting comes together and I think like reading the books it's just so satisfying and yeah I just really enjoy the story okay so I will hopefully read two more Game of Thrones books this year but will it happen who knows but yeah I adore this okay it was my favorite series when I read it the first time many years ago and I think that still does stay true it's just you know I know it has issues, but I still love it. So five out of five stars for that. I then read another fake one, which was Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb, the third and final book in the Life Ships Trader series. And it wrapped up. I finished a series, What is Life? But I'm saying but because it's difficult. <laughs> I don't know. Like it finally came together after all this time of reading so, so, so many hundreds of pages. It came together. And yeah, this is, I don't even know. I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. This is the second series in the realm of Eldering's universe. So like, I would recommend reading the other series first, even though these two doesn't connect as much. But like, I would just read them in publication order to get the full picture. Can I stop getting emails? Can I take off my sound on my phone? And this one just follow this family that has this live ship. Where live ships are like ships that comes to life after three generations has died on the deck. And there's just so many characters and Robin Hobb is just a genius in writing character work and yeah I just I guess what I want to say is that I feel like it didn't give me the same rush and emotions as reading the first trilogy it's like I didn't feel the satisfaction when we read the end here it was just like it all came together and at the point I was just like can it be over now because I feel like now we just stretched it so far so thin and I feel like it spent a lot of time just building up to it I guess the conclusion instead of like using more time on the conclusion itself. So yeah, I did really, really love it. And I love Robin Hobb, like one of my favorite authors. And I am so excited to continue with the universe. I just think that like, I guess I expected it to be like amazing and it was really good, but it wasn't exactly like, I feel like, uh, I feel like it was just like parts that could have been like executed better in the end. Also like one thing that happened I think was completely unnecessary. I just say unnecessary rape because I just feel like it, we do need that to see these character move I guess because something else could have happened. It's not like it was handled badly because it was very accurate to how I would assume some people feel after it happened. So it wasn't like ignored or anything. I just think like that is like the scene that changes a lot. And I think like, why did it have to be that? It could have been something else. I guess what I'm thinking. But yeah, four to five stars for this one. Can I articulate thoughts? I cannot, but here we are. I then read Demon Slayer Volume 6 by Koyo Hao Goto Uga. This one is the sixth volume in the series. I don't know why I say like Volume 6 and then I say afterwards which number it is. I don't know why I do that. I'm sorry. This one follows Sanjiro, whose home family is killed by demons. He decides to become a demon slayer to hunt them down and find more about them because his sister is turned into demon, but he wants to return back to human. We go out on different demon hunting missions. It's lots of fun. Really enjoy myself here. He meets a lot of different characters. And I think now after this, we go into the arc that was in the movie, which was amazing by the way. And I'm so excited. But I'm also kind of excited to maybe actually move past that to like see new stuff because now I'd literally just be reading everything I watched. But I do also love that though because then I get it in double. There's double pain and double joy. Who doesn't love that? 
So yay. Then I did read Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the Stumbleck Archive series. I have one more now, and then like a short story, if I want to read that before. And this is serious, just, oh, how about to say, like, it's like basically about set in this world where like Night's Radiance, which was like these heroes with different powers, is coming back and they're gonna fight. I was gonna say a couple of, but like the world is going under and I need to like stop it. It just have different characters that we follow. And I guess like the first book, we really follow like Kaladin and we like found out his whole backstory. And then the second book was Shalon's backstory. And then this one we get ba Dalniar's more backstory. But, like we get to know all of them, but they all had like, in my impression, one book each. And I think that's an interesting approach. They all had like different secrets. We found out like their story. I love it. I don't know why, but I for some reason felt like I was a bit underwhelmed in this one. I did really, really enjoy myself and I love the world and characters and all that and writing. Everything is good. I just feel like, I just feel like I was so much more invested when I read Words and Kings, but I do adore it. I just like was sitting there like, this is it. How are we going to wrap up the story? It's only two books left. Like, I know it's going to be 10 books, but it's like the five first is the one arc and five afterwards is one arc after that. So I assume maybe they will have like a thing that like explodes and then like in the next arc we will see how we go. I don't know. Like a part of me thinks like maybe <laughs> they will fail and then like we will like try again. But I feel like that would be weird since they already kind of failed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, it will be interesting. I have full belief in Brandon Sanderson. He is a writing god. I have full belief that he will be able to like wrap up the story. I just feel like, I guess it's a bit of a slow pace. I'm thinking about it in all the different books. Like things happen, but it's still slow paced. Maybe because it's so long, it feels slow paced. I don't even know. But yeah, amazing, five out of five stars. I just like, I guess I have more reservations because I'm trying to think, not just like, oh my God, I love Brown Sanderson, but just trying to think of the story. But like the thinking and the scheme and like the brain cells to write this, it's amazing. So yeah, I, I do truly love it though. I sounded so critical, I'm sorry. And then read Towers of Midnight by Brandon Sanderson and Robert Jordan. This is <laughs> the second to last Wheel of Time book. And yeah, a lot of things happen. I listened to this on audiobook as per usual, but just the story is scaring me right now. I have one book left and I don't know if I want to pick it up because I don't want it to end. I feel like I've been with these characters for so long. Like they become my best friends. I just, I don't want it to end. So yeah, we have time to just follow people trying to fight the dark one. I, I don't even know. Like I will try to make like a full wheel of time video when I finish it. But like talking about this book and trying to explain it just like shortly, it's like, how do you do that? I'm sorry, I just lost the book. I'm sorry. Things are just coming. You really feel that Anna's coming, like literally. I cannot deal. I don't want to read a lost book. I am scared, but also like I'm excited, but I'm scared. But yeah, it's just so good, okay? These last few books, this one and the last one before this, has just been so good. And yeah, I give it even five or five stars. So yay, excited for the last one. I don't, I don't know what to say. Like I can literally not say anything without spoiling anything. So here we are. Then read Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This one was the Facing Gaze pick for July. Facing Gaze is a book club where we read queer, sci-fi or fantasy every single month. And Black Sun, as I said, was our pick and I don't know how to describe this, but basically we follow different characters and they are building up to this certain day, this holy day. And then like different things will happen when the day arrives. <laughs> We're gonna have a live show. I might actually air it when this is up. I don't even know. But yeah, maybe we're able to speak more about like the plot then. I'll try to leave a link down below. This was really good. I really liked it. I like the different characters. I really enjoyed like what we saw of the world. I'm just excited for like the sequel. There were so many good elements in this. There was like some very specific things that I'm very excited to talk about when we can talk about spoilers that I just adored. It had so many elements in the fantasy that I loved and I just enjoyed myself immensely. I had like some downfalls like I would think it was very confusing at first and that uh, like it was very slow paced because if you think about it nothing that much like actually went down in this one so definitely like a bullet book and thing but i just really enjoyed myself i'm just looking at it now and i just had such a fun ride reading it so four out of five stars really recommend and very excited to continue with the series i'm very excited for the live show to talk about this because 
I think there's many elements we can discuss and I'm excited. So then I finally read Nora Rice by Kirsten White. This one is the second book in the Conqueror saga and it's basically Vlad the Impaler retelling but Vlad the Impaler is a girl and we follow Lada who was Vlad and her brother Radu and they just like want to reclaim their kingdom that like they lost when they were kids. I guess their father lost it but you get the point. I love it! Okay so reading the first book I didn't think that I've enjoyed that much because I was hearing so mixed things but I read it it was slow paced yes it was so enjoyable getting to know these characters going deep into their childhoods to like when they grow up then this relationship was established so well that when they do the things they do here and like in the end of last book it makes so much sense because she has built Kirsten White has built the foundation for everything that happened so thoroughly and here I guess I felt like it became a bit repetitive because like we were switching between point of views and it was just the same thing happening every time we switched and I was just like can we just get to it but yeah things went down I am a bit disappointed in my boy Radu I hope he redeems himself in the next book and get a happy ending I don't think a lot of we get a happy ending but we will see but yeah absolutely adore this series it's so good i don't really see like the much fantasy elements in it it's more like historical retelling but it's just so 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 good just like seeing all these elements come together historical elements and you care so much about the characters it's just fun and uh, a lot of brutal shit is happening a lot of killing and stuff so it's a great time and i'm excited to read the last book but also kind of scared because it's not thick so like are they all gonna be okay? Probably not. I'm sad. Four to five stars for that. And then we're already at the last book. I feel like this went so fast, so I'm happy about that. It's A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. So I listened to this on the audiobook. And I said I was gonna listen to this if I ever listened to A Hero of Ages, but I didn't get to that one. So I'm listening to that now in August. I just did this one because I had short time left of the month and I knew I was able to finish this. And The Hero of Ages is like a billion years longer. So here we are with this one. So this was a reread. I have read it first physically. Absolutely loved it the first time. And I absolutely loved it this time too. This one follows Gad, who finds out that he has I was gonna say wizardly powers, I don't even know, but like he goes to magic school, he releases this shadow that hunts him down and he's trying to escape from it. There's like amazing world building and I love the magic system, I love the characters, I love how all like the next books come together in a story and I just love how they're so short but Ursula Le Guin doesn't waste a single sentence. Everything here, in my opinion, it's just like written so well like she is such a good writer and that's why her books are not that long because she doesn't need a billion words to say what she needs to say she just go writes on it I guess this could also be like a problem for some people because like you feel like you don't get like the big swoosh blush but I just really really enjoy it I love how she writes for me at least like I get it could be a bit heavy but I love it, okay? So yeah, I give it 5 out of 5 stars, as it deserves. And I see all these books that Ursula has written. And I haven't read, like, any of them. I only read Earthsea. So I need to get my shit together. <laughs> but yeah, loved it. I recommend a lot. Especially, like, the audiobook. It's really nice. And these editions are so pretty. I'm so happy. But yeah, that was it for all the books I read this month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a wrap-up. I feel like I'm getting better at them. And you will see me soon in the video. Thank you so much for watching. I already said that. Leave a wizard emoji down below if you enjoyed this. Goodbye.